working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of What a Horse. And I'm going to do it today. I was told I didn't do a bad job. Well, they didn't make, want to make you feel better. Is that it? Yeah. Well, we'll be right back after these messages. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And KD Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles along with your coat. And days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. Watch for Eli Cunningham as he rides into Lebanon under a new show pleasure division on It's the Medalist and Yakety Yak. Eli and It's the Medalist have been in the winner's circle many times through the years, and this year they are going for top honors at the 86th National Celebration. Eli will be teaming with Yakety Yak for their first appearance in the Big Oval. Eli and his family ask for your support as he rides for spotlight honors during the Tennessee Walking Horse National Celebration. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. Alrighty, Friday night, Blue Ribbon Show in Fedville, Tennessee. You can call Bart LaVorn, 615-478-2141. Start time 6 p.m. Jason Hughes will be the judge. And then August the 3rd, the 118th War Trace Horse Show. Was you there? I believe you was there that one, wasn't you? I probably Didn't was. Didn't you announce it? I was at there as 104. Okay. <laughs> Contact Beth Thomas, 931-580-86825, or D. Cantrell, 706-366-1011. Start time is 6 p.m., and the judge is Joe Fleming. Joe does a great job yeah. judging now. Joe he does, does a good I, job. I remember him in Manchester. He, uh, he, he just reared back and tied horses all night long, did a fantastic job, I thought. I do want to make an announcement. We've got some we got some video of Lab Diamonds. I want to show that and then I'm going to tell you what's coming. So let's let's show the video of the Lab Diamonds. If you don't know how to ask that diamonds do the asking for you. You can now get the same chemical, physical and optical properties as mine diamonds with lab grown diamonds. They are graded the same standards as mine diamonds because they are grown by the same process as cultured diamonds through two methods, 
high pressure, high temperature, and chemical vapor deposits in a controlled area. These diamonds are as real as mine diamonds, possessing the same chemical and physical properties. The one major difference is time. Lab diamonds can be grown in weeks to a few months, reducing the cost while providing the same quality. All right. We have got a gold, solid gold men's ring come in 1.4 carat with lab grown diamonds, BS1 grade. I saw a picture of it this morning. It's beautiful. I bet it is beautiful. Hey, it is beautiful, and it's on the way, so we'll have it. Now, I want to talk about something. Uh, you've seen, you and I have talked about this. The Department of Agriculture filed a motion to dismiss the July 25th, uh, well, on July 25th, they, they wanted to dismiss the Michael and Casey Wright and Josh Wright lawsuit. Now, they're using the argument that uh, the Wright's claims are barred by the Administration Procedure Act six-year statute of limitations. But they're neglecting to say for years they have gone back multiple years, as far back as 10 and more years getting all, everything together that they could, foreign substance, which is very questionable, to go after the rights. But now they're wanting, because this lawsuit, they're wanting it thrown out on the basis that it goes past the six years, but they've tormented them two guys for yes. years. Uh -huh. I mean, ever since I've known them, the government has been tormenting them. But here's, here's the uh, thing that gets me. The Wrights filed their lawsuit back in March. The new rule didn't take effect until July 1. So their lawsuit was already filed. Yes. So I don't see why it, it would want to go back simply because of the way the government does. You, uh, you go through it. Oh, you yeah. I talked about it a lot. I talked to people the other day. And, and they, I, I was asked this question. I said, have you ever seen Jerry Williams lead a horse up? I said, yeah. They said, have you ever seen him lead one up that the government doesn't want to look at it? I said, very seldom. That, you are right. I mean, it seems like every time you turn around, they want to look at your horse. That, that to me, that's targeted. You know, the biggest thing with me is this. I thought the government was there, and, this, and I might be wrong at this, but I thought the government was there. If they found any doubt, once that DQP put that horse down, that that horse was walking funny or doing something, out of the way, that's why they want to check or whatever. I must think all of mine must be walking funny or doing something <laughs> out of the way because that's what they want to do. They want to check them. But I think it just, they just got to that point that they want to target certain people and that's what they want to do. That has nothing to do with it. The, the horse dip wasn't tall. They've got a little list that's called the entry forms. Yes. And they always go in and they ask the people that are doing the entries, we want a copy of the entry forms. They take those entry forms, they go in to an area and they sit there and say, well, we want to check this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. They, they know. That's why if you watch them, and I've watched them too many times, that if certain people are coming in and they're inspecting a horse, if they see that, they'll hurry up and get rid of that one so they can get with this other one. I've even seen them motion them out of timeout. They can say what they want to, but the USDA is made up of people, veterinarians, that have lost their business, lost their job in the dealing with the public, have done something to cause them to have their license revoked for a while. Those are the type of people that the USDA hires. The good veterinarians, the ones that came in and honestly did their job, if you noticed, they're not here anymore. They're not inspecting. Yes. There's several of them that we don't see. They're gone. And, and you wonder why. And all you got to do is look at the, the way they inspected a horse versus the way we've got two right now inspect. I watched DeSoe inspect a horse. It took him less than two minutes. Yes. 
and he did a thorough job. Then I turned around and I videoed one of the ladies. It took her almost six minutes. The other lady, it took her a little over five. Yeah. There's a major difference between what the soul was doing and what they're doing. You know, I watched this weekend and the USD was there and they had this particular lady that checked horses this weekend. And I seen her pick a horse's foot up and checked it. And then she got to taking her nail and got to peeking at that horse's foot. Now, I don't see nowhere that that's, that's legal to do that to a horse's foot. It's not. And, and scraping the back of that horse's foot up. It's not legal. But they're, they're, I'm, I'm like this. And, and she is getting more and more active in doing this. She, she's assaulted the lady. She turned around and, and tried to provoke a man. But she is doing things, try to provoke a reaction from someone in this industry. And I hope and pray nobody ever gives in to her tactics because as soon as you do, they're going to point the finger at everybody and tell everybody how violent we are. They yes. ain't going to tell them what they did to cause it. They ain't going to tell you that, hey, I hit her because she slapped my horse or, or it, it's kind of like the bully down the street. His parents bring the kid because he finally got his nose busted and said, well, your kid busted mine in the nose. But what did that kid do to provoke well, the other one? That's where you're exactly right. You and know that's where we're at. My biggest thing of it is the USDA is there to stop soil horses from going in the rain or whatever. But now they try and tell you how many people can be back there at your chain cart and all that stuff. I, you know, I don't see how they have the right to be able to tell you that. Once you didn't went through their process and got past them, and then you go to your chain cart or wherever area you got your horse at. Well, you got to look at it like this. You've got people that help you. I go to your barn and I see yesterday, you went to pick up some horses, but there was four people in there working. Yes. And then the blacksmith showed up. Now that wasn't counting the ones down there working on picking stalls. Oh, yeah. So, but when you go to the horse show, everything they come up with, Jerry, through the years has been to cause some kind of conflict with the inspection in the inspection area. Anything they can do to cause a disadvantage. That's like this timeout. They limit you, they want you to bring your horse up three classes prior to. Well, we all know some classes go like that, some classes go a little longer, and sometimes there's not a horse in one of them classes. classes. That's right. But then they take you and put you in time out while they go over there and sit down and chew, chew the fat, not caring whether or not you get your horse in the class. And a lot of people have missed showing because of the incompetence of the USDA official, and especially the two we're talking about. Yes. Because they are the worst about it. They measure a 50-50 measurement and say, well, it's out, but you take it outside, put it on a flat surface and measure, and it's not out. But here's the problem. That guy's already gone. He's already turned down. He's already missed his class. So. What they were told to do years ago, as far as the due process, they just threw it out the window and said, well, we ain't gonna do it. Yeah. They can't pretend that they even tried to do it because they didn't. Well, I think, it, I don't know, over the years, over all the years they had all this stuff going on, every time you look up, look up you look like you have one USDA or, or two that caused more problems than all the rest of them. You do. If, if you look back for the last 10 or 15 years, Every time you have one that come in, and then they'll get rid of that one, then they'll have another one to come in and take his spot. But it, I mean, now you got two that, that took the other one's spots that was causing trouble, you know, four or five years ago, six years ago. Yeah. Well, that's it, just like now. You can go research people now and find out what they were, what they did, and all this. And I can tell you, you look at the resumes of some of these people that they use to target us. And uh, I wouldn't hire them. Yeah. I mean. But I think sometimes they just hire them just so they can start an uproar in a business or whatever, you know. They, they, they getting worse and worse at it. 
and uh, we may see them again this weekend. Yeah. But right now, we're going to go to the corner pool and watch some good horses. And this is what gets me. Even when the government ain't there, if a bad image horse comes in, I ain't seen it. Yeah. But they don't. They don't seem to care. This horse here is doing is hey, a, 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 a Robert, good horse. Robert's got several good horses. Oh, he does. He let a young lady ride one of his this past weekend, and she won. He just uh, he's got good horses, and that right there, Georgia, Florida line. He's one of them. Right here is one I like. Red Alert. That, <laughs> I this do. is another good horse right here. I love that horse. He's just a, a he's a beautiful horse. Kim does a great job of showing him. And I tell you, almost every time you look up, you see this horse in that ring yeah. showing. I well, mean, Dan amateur open. He, he shows his horses. Yeah. He and everything. He doesn't sit back and let them stand in the stall. He gets them out there and gets them to the show. And right here, Miss Stone Cash. That's another real good horse with. I thought Linda did a great Linda, job. She's, and I'm telling you, her and Noel are some real nice people. Yeah, she might have took that horse away from him. Yeah. He might not get it back. He might just think he's going to get it back. <laughs> Women and kids have a way of doing that. I'm glad to see her showing, and she well, really enjoyed it. Well, you never see her without a smile yeah. on her face. That's a fact. Right here, Wilhelm. I like this horse. Yes. His, uh, his namesake was a great breeder. Yeah, he really was. And Dan, Dan's getting up. His horse is in the ring showing a lot. Oh, yeah, he's doing a good job. Dan doing a real good job. Will Hound, like that name, makes a statement. Missy Johnson and Tim, boy, they really like him. Yeah. All right. Where are we gonna go now? Now that was that was there. Now we're gonna watch some class video because we're going to Heart of Champions. And I wanna say this, Marcy Allison and I have put on several shows together. She did a fantastic job. Oh yeah, job she did. I didn't help her a bit. Yeah. Might have encouraged her some, but I <laughs> I wasn't in there helping like I normally do. This is your three-year-old Marion and Gilding class. Hey, watch this this was a good class. It was. This, this class was a lot of good horses good, in there. Good horses in this class right here. Well, I'm a little lady, and Casey Wright took the blue for Woods and Roberts. Oh, Debbie got got Jim Roberts in the saying, hey, you're going to do some advertising. <laughs> Let's get done. <laughs> but I'm a little lady who took the blue. She's a honky-tonk girl in Drew Graves. Charlie's lucky lady. Mama's money. And mighty persuasive. I really like that name. Yeah. And that, that's what happens when you watch a horse, these horses. They're mighty persuasive, especially if you watch them from the inspection <laughs> area right on through the class. Yes. And they're not struggling no. or balking or whopping around. They're getting it done. All right, riders, it's run and walk time. Call up on your three-year-old mares and gildings to show on the rail at a run and walk. Look at there. Nice horse. Well, there, How's a class full of good horses hey, up in the there? class was, and, and that's what I'm saying. There was no USDA there. Yeah. And we got this caliber of horses. None of them look out of place. That just goes to show the USDA is stretching the dollar. They used to say we did, but now it ain't us anymore. They're the ones that's stretching. Yeah. I am a little lady and Casey Wright for Debbie Woods and Jim Roberts of Lexington and Wildersville. I am a little lady and Casey Wright. It's number 499. There it is. Riding around now. It's our Looking winner, good. Winner. Class number 14, our Riders Cup three-year-old Looking Gilles. real good. Looking. I know Debbie's proud of him. Yeah. Casey and them put some good horses in the ring. He does. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Him they and his brother. They work hard. Yeah. I know. I went down there one time. I had to wait until they decided to take a break. <laughs> right here, Show Pleasure Youth Class. 
the Jan O was reserving this class and I thought he looked great. Bakerfield won the class with Brooklyn Jones. The Jan O was reserved for Daniel Smith and pushing JFK all over, London Coffee finished out the ribbon. But look there. How is this as smooth and what you call the ideal show pleasure horse? He is. He's perfect in yeah. what he does. There's three good ones in oh, there. Oh, yeah. I, I, I like that Dijano. I really do. I always said it made it, it a nice horse. Daniel riding real well too. Sits oh, yeah. up. I mean, but Daniel's a good rider. He, he is. He, uh, reminds me of a, a trainer we used to have years ago. He's up in that saddle. All right, you riders, let's see what you got on the rail. Hands now, down. Oh, and down. Just Let getting her done. That horse is very smooth going, yeah. doing what you want him to do. You never missed a lick. Mm -mm. Never missed a lick. And There's Dijano, the show pleasure of a reserve Tejano winner. Smith, I thought he was great. The, the crowd, yeah. when they called his name, that crowd went crazy. Yeah. That's, that he got that horse's name is right in that class. Show yeah. pleasure. He's a show pleasure to ride. He is. He sure is. You know, ain't the snatching, ain't the jumping or whatever. Everything is just Here. smooth and easy. Here's your youth ponies. It, this was a good class, but I'm, I'm fixing to tell you. I was tickled to death to see Ryder right out there. There he is. When he was a little tot, I had him a stick horse mate. Uh -huh. And they made it to where that horse's head would, it had a spring yeah. on inside the stick. And that horse's head would go up and down. And I gave it to him. Next time I saw his mother, she said he done shook that stick so much he broke that horse. <laughs> <laughs> broke the sword. But I am March Madness, and Ryder Ride took the blue for Debbie Woods in this class. And knock on wood, JC Anderson Collinger was reserved. But now I'm gonna tell you, I thought. In all honesty, I thought Ryder yeah. made a great show. And I looked down there, and his sister, who has won multiple blue ribbons in yeah. the ring, she was excited as everybody else was. <laughs> Cheering, screaming, yelling. On the reverse now, you they call those horse people. Oh, yeah. Second way at a flat walk, please. You know, this, this class right here with them youth ponies and stuff like that, I mean, it does good for these kids to get involved in, in this horse industry and, you know, and it keeps them, their mind occupied and they want to do it. You know, it's good for them. It really is. You know, I've, I've talked, I've had people send me some video of, of their children, kids, 11 year old boy trying to, uh, he, he's working on training his own horse. We're trying to get that video. I ain't mentioned no name right yeah. now because I want that if that we can make it work, I'm going to put that video together and show it yeah. to show that these these young children are out here learning to work with horses. Well, that's right. And this is going to be a performance horse. Yeah. Him and them both kids ain't having a good time. Oh yeah, they are having a good time. They're in a duel back and forth. Two good horses. And that March Madness is a piece of work. Right but there he is. Rider right. 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 I am March Madness. I like to watch him. Oh, yeah. It's fun watching these kids when they're small and then watch them today. They grow up quick. This is Debbie Wood's horse here.
Debbie said, she, she, she told me, she said, I won't ride her on your show. <laughs> that tickled me. And here's amateur ponies. Now, this was a tough class. Yes. Dark Rain, Taylor Walters took the blue from Molly Walters' family. Hardy and Lucky Collins was reserved. Thunderstruck and Dixie. Joyce Hostin was third. Tony the Pony, Christy Guthrie. And Jen's, I cannot say that. Bart McQuarters was fifth, finished out the ribbons. But now, look at the horses in this class. Oh, yeah. But Dark Rain. Oh, that's a, nice, hey, that's a good horse there. Now. Dark Rain is going to be hard to beat no yeah. matter what. He, he is just one. Heck, and, and He makes a statement when he goes in the rain. Oh, he does? Yeah. And Taylor can flat ride it. Yes, she I can. I mean, she doesn't miss a lick on that horse. That makes it that much better. All right now, riders. You got a great time. horse and a real good rider. rider. Yeah. That makes for a winning team. Yeah. That horse always looks like he's looking up at the sky right I there. Know. And I like one to do that. I mean, he ain't shaking his head down, he's shaking his head up to you. Yeah, that's it. He's getting it done, too. Yeah. That, that class was packed. Yeah. But you look at him, his head up in the air. He's going. I like what Taylor ride, but she got them hands down here. She ain't yeah. a jerking in a snatch. Uh -huh. She's just sitting there letting him get, get do his thing. Dark Rain and Taylor there Walters. There is Dark Bobby Rain and Taylor Walters for Molly Walters Dark family, Rain your amateur Walters pony winner. Around to, the blue. to the rail now. We see our blue ribbon winner for our amateur ponies class is entry number 522. I accept and watch stuff Rain like that yeah. all day Walters long. For Molly Walters from Rancho Mirage, California. Dark Rain and if, Taylor if Walters. The government would just let us have horse shows. You know the biggest thing, if they just do their job right, yeah. instead of overdoing it. You're right. You know. That's it in a nutshell. It in a nutshell. That's what it's gonna take. It's yeah. gonna take them doing it right. All right, now you, I did it. I'll let you do it. We'll see. We're gonna take help people. <clears> let, me, let me let me straighten up here do, now. Do, do your thing. We'll be right back after these messages. Yeah. A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro, 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry. World Grand Champion, Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000. Or select amateur show pleasure, World Grand Champion, El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these World Grand Champion stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another world grand champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. Watch for Ali Jo Jacobs during the 86th National Celebration when she competes for the highest honors aboard Ain't He Grand in the 11 and under equitation division. Ali Jo will be guiding Switchblade in the 11 and under pony division as she goes for championship honors in a highly competitive division. In the Youth 11 and Under Mare Division, Ali Joe will be guiding I Sang Dixie as they thrive for top honors. The Jake Jacobs family asks for your support as Ali Joe Jacobs rides for your approval. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax-deductible donation as fast as a 501c3. And be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go.
B plus, maybe. Uh, yeah, you know, I understand. You know, we got a lot of people, you know, when you got somebody else to do it better, you know, they're haters out there. I know, that's, that's, you know, way, that's, that's, way that, that's how things but are. I tell you what. No, I won't tell you. I was, I was, <laughs> I was going to tell you something, but I ain't going to do it. Let's go. We're going to Marshall County Horseman Association. It was a real good show here, too. Hey, they had some fantastic shows. Yes. Three-year-old Marion Gildon was no slouch. Ladies Privilege and Thomas Derrickson for Missy and Tim Johnson took the blue. Sweet I Am, Blake Weaver for Ronnie Logston. It's Jazz at the Ritz, Link Webb, Tony Hudson, Hot Street, Sam Martin, Don Bullock, and a red alert, Dan Waddell for George and Kim Lewis. Now remember, he showed in Connorsville. Yeah. Come back and he showed here. Uh huh. Then the next night, he's he's in Pulaski. Yeah. That's why I say that horse there, that red alert. I mean, he's he, he he's a good horse. He was yeah. in there with a bunch of good horses. Uh huh. Well, nothing wrong with any of them horses in there. But my point is this: he's showing open and amateur competition yeah. and doing well in every one of them. Yeah. So that horse, you see him when he comes through. Look at that. You see him when he comes in. This was another good class over there. That, that lady's privilege is, is uh, something special. Real special. Thomas does a fantastic Tom, job. Thomas does a real, a real good job. You got that, that sweet I am, Lake Weaver. I mean, it, this, yeah. this class right here had a bunch of good horses, and it's uh, winning it. You're doing something. We'll have to try to get Thomas one day on his TV show. Yeah, we will. I've had his mom and his dad. I've had him before, but he was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> he was young. But since he's going to turn to be a man now, he had you know. his sisters on here. His, his dad was the first person that ever interviewed for one horse. Out there he is, three-year-old Marion Gildon winner, Ladies Privilege and Thomas Derrickson for Missy and Tim Johnson. And he's an early sets up. Oh, yeah, he sets up in the saddle. He presents a horse very, very well. I know Herbert got to be very proud of him, especially when you got a kid that, you know, your son turns to be a horse trainer like you were. You know. Well, Herbert sets up in the saddle. Matter of fact, Herbert won the equitation for the yeah. trainers down in uh, Timnica one year. But the whole family, the, his daughters, his sisters, they set up in that saddle. Right here, your amateur three-year-old mares and gilding. And I'm gonna be honest. I like that I'm the boss lady. Yes. Now she's just a bad cat getting it done. But smooching with Charlie and Jay Crump took the blue. I'm the boss lady. Bob Adcock was reserved. Dixie Bow. Storm Sims and Beyond Repair J.D. Smith finished out the ribbon. But I am a I'm the boss lady fan because I think she looked great. Yes. Nice, easy, and slow. That's what I like about her. She doesn't, she's not one of these that you rush. No. You let her do her thing. Let her walk. Let her walk. Yeah, there's a bunch of good horses in that class. Oh, Bob just sets up there. Yes. But you're right. I noticed. I kept watching. He does not have a horse one that he can look over the oh, head. That's every one of his horses up in there, and I guess that might be a trait he likes. You, know, uh, you know, and that's a good thing. between them ears. Yep. On his case of horses, he probably look on the side of his ears because yep. you look between them, you can't see them in the sky. <laughs> Tell you what, he's got some good stock. He got some good, I'm telling you, he do. He got some good stock. I told you, I wish I had some stock like that. Now, here's another 
good rider. Yeah. You, you don't see him snatching no, and uh -uh. looking around a lot. He sits steady in that saddle. I can't, I, it bothers me when you see people, they're moving around the saddle or snatching on their horses. Well, it takes a lot from, it tells you a lot about the trainer. Yeah. You know, because the amateur is supposed to sit there and enjoy his ride when right. he's riding it. Well, Bob does. I can yeah. tell you that he, now. He, he really he has a good time. Enjoys himself. I'm the boss lady. There it is. I'm the boss lady and Bob Adcock for Ashley Young was the reserve and amateur three-year-old Marion Gildan. That mare is just as steady as you She is. Nice horse. Yes. Real good horse. Amateur stallion. Well, you got to give it to him again, because he, he come in walking, he walked the whole class, and he went out walking. Oh, yep. Honored in Texas, and Bob Adcock took the blue. There he is. The legal tender. I like that legal tender, too. Mm -hmm. Cherry Bonner. An executive privilege, Ben Moss. Three good horses. Three good horses. Real good horses. This Ben, he liked to ride them horses too. Oh He's, Lord, yeah, yeah. Well, you got three good, good ones right. here. That, yeah, you got three that legal good horses. tender. I've yeah. liked that horse a long time. Sherry does a good job of showing him. But now, but look, Bob, man, that's Bobby, something. Look at that horse. That horse is heated up in the air. I mean, he just doing what he wasn't supposed to do. He just sitting there getting her done. Getting her done. We need eventually to take a picture of all his horses going and just the head shot yep. and see how all of them head the same position. Well, they're up there right, right in his face, yeah. buddy. That was a good class. That was a good there class. There three horses in there, but that was quality horses. That's the good part about it is the quality that you see. That horse Miss Bob's on, I mean, he's just steady and smooth and, and just keep getting better and better. Yeah, he does. Kind of builds as the yeah. class goes on. And you look at his knees, his knees step up over that rail. I know. But now, he, that's a big horse. Yes, he is. Well, you, you notice most of Bob's horses are a big good yeah. size. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have any real small. Oh. Amateur stallion winner, honored in Texas, and Bob Adcock. We'll probably see Bob this weekend. You probably so? I don't. I don't think he, he, he can go that long. If it, just three weeks till the celebration. So he's gonna have to be out there so if he ain't, if he ain't showing, I promise you he'll be at the horse show. Oh yeah, he'll be now there. He loves them shows. See the last show before the celebration around here is the third. That's 18 days before celebration yep. starts, so he, he he'll uh, he'll have to do something. Amateur three year old stallion. No. You had a lot to do with this one. Now this is the uh, this is dear to my heart right here. <laughs> I tell you, especially when you start one from the ground up. Yep. Errol Smith, That's Courtney Luttrell, Seeking Justice, Alex Blackburn, and I Won't Choose, Sister Milligan, finished out the ribbon. But tell us about Errol Smith. Errol Smith, I'm gonna tell you, that's the talented, most talented young coat I ever started in my life, I believe. So far. So far? Yeah, so far, so, so far. far. But now he have, now he's, He's been a talented little horse. Well, he's been, he been good court. Courtney, and she does a good job riding him. Brandon and, and all of them over at Snapwood does a good job of training him. And Kevin is there in the picture. 
Hell, he just he just let apart the picture. <laughs> nah, Kevin's a good guy now, I tell you. But I'm I'm very proud of this horse right here in Courtney. Jay, what is a good one? I mean, he he has won some deep classes. Yes. Too. But that's what it's all about. I have a saying, I always say it to little yearlings and stuff like that. I can look through muddy water and see dry land. And I said this about this when he was just a, a weanling out there. Well, you watch some of these move around the way they walk oh, yeah. and that looseness of their body. That, that's what I like. I always watch their back end. I want to see how their back end's moving, how they're going. There he is. Amateur three-year-old stay in winter, Errol Smith and Courtney Luttrell for Luttrell. Real good horse. Errol Smith, 243, is your class winner. Courtney's a good jockey, though. is a real good rider. She's a good one. Courtney know how to present a horse too. Yeah. I mean, when you see her on one, she's she's ready to get it ready done. To, that's that's right. For sure. Then you got the state class. Yep. There's some good horses. There's in that some state good horses in that state class. You had Cavender and Tim Smith took the blue for Bruce and Robin McDonald. My addiction, R.M. Kelly for Mr. and Ms. Howard Estridge, and honored of the Ritz, Dan Waddell for Jasney Beasley finished out the ribbon. But Cavender, I'm oh, gonna tell you now, he, he's gonna be in the running. Yeah. I know a lot of people already trying to tie that state class, but I've seen horses that were supposed to win it before go in there. And, and, Oh, right. yes, sir. Didn't get it. You take a gene almighty one year. Yeah. Harley didn't win a blue ribbon all year and end up coming around with world, the roses in it. World grand champion. That's right. And rightly so, and, and it had some offspring or something else. That's right. So, but there, there's other times. I mean, but, just, but this Kavanaugh uh, horse, I'm going to tell you, he's a nice horse. He's supposed to win. Yeah. Main power one. That's three talented horses. Oh, that right is. There, that's, that's what you call a state clay that you want to sit there and watch right there. Well, that, you hear the people. Yeah. They're cheering. They like what's going on. They like it. You can tell when a man riding when he never turns sideways on his shoulder right yeah. there. He's he's very <laughs> he's getting into it. He's getting into it there. Leaning into the curve, yeah. I believe I call that. <laughs> there he is, Cavender. Tim Smith. Walking horse state class winner. Cavender 218. Is your class winner. That is a big right, he is. I remember the first time I saw him, I knew it then that he was going to be something that had to be contended. Yeah. Good horse. Yeah. Need something else. All right, I tell you what, we'll we'll both. Go to commercial. Okay. That, that'll work. You ready? You ready? One, two, three, go. We'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> <laughs> During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live full guarantee. 
multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee Walking Horse Champion. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old. Whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you'll own one tomorrow. That's a fact. Folks, this is where you send money to help in the legal fund to combat the new proposed rulemaking that the USDA released here a couple weeks ago. This is tax deductible donation as fast as a 501c3 and be sure to put legal fund on your memo line as this guarantees that your money goes exactly where you want it to go. More of What a Horse coming up. I believe that's the best you ever did it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to go to Pulaski red carpet time. They had a, no matter what, they still had a lot of talent out oh, there. Oh, yeah, they did. A lot they of good a, classes. A lot of good horses. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you, fighting the government every time you go to a horse show. And I've, I had one guy call, said, a lady said, horse had never been turned down, never been questioned, and she got it. Remember what I told you. Amateur three-year-old mare in Gildan, red alert. Now, just showed in Marshall County. Yeah, that's right. And then she goes, and, and inspected by the government, goes to Pulaski the next night, and they say we abuse these horses. Yeah, that's right. Give me a break. Red Alert and Kim Lewis took the blue for George and Kim Lewis. Now that's all right, Mama. I like that. Cheryl Sherman for Floyd Sherman. Angel Eyes, Frank Clark for Tom Hodges. And Charlie Woods, Ronnie Loxton for Ronnie Loxton. Oh. It tickled me when I see a horse show then come back the next night and yeah. show. Open competition one night, next night, amateur competition. Now, Kim can say, I can ride him. I'm good you, can. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call Dan, I'm gonna ask. <laughs> no, I ain't either. Cause it, Dan's training is getting that horse the where he's at. Oh yeah. But now, I love that horse. I just think he's a eye catcher. He is. They had a bunch of good horses in this yeah, class. They did. Yeah. Wasn't no slouch up there. Uh -uh. That's what gets me is we, we can have such good shows. Yeah. And put horses in the ring, and if you match these horses with the horses Thursday night with no government, you're not going to see it's any difference. difference. That's right. You you won't. So for the government to say they're needed at, to come in there, that they need someone to come in to just bully around and try to cause a conflict, that's not true. There she is, Red Alert and Kim Lewis for George and Kim Lewis, your amateur three-year-old Marion Gildan winner. I like that horse. Well, let's take a look at our Blue Ribbon winner. It's a Red Alert wearing the blue in Pulaski. That's Kim Lewis, the rider from Newville, Alabama. Give Kim a nice round of applause as she leaves the show ring.
Nice King of Very horse. nice. And here's Chief and Clay Sanderson. I tell you, now this horse right here. A bad cat. Is a bad cat. I mean now. a bad cat. Two year old stay in winter. This is the first time this horse has ever been in the ring. Yeah. Right here. Hey. And I tell you. He made his presence known. He made his presence known. Everybody needs to remember the chief. That's it. Boy, I'm going to tell you, now he's a, a walking son of a gun right there. They are proud of him. I would yeah. be. Here's your amateur 50 and over. I am, beyond a shadow of a doubt, a Mark One fan. Now, I am. There are a lot of good horses out there, but I really like that horse because he, he is consistent yeah. as day is long. We will rock you and Chris Hutchinson won the blue, but Mark One and Molly Walters put on a show. Oh, yeah. I'm the Alamo, Barbara Corbett, and Ink Master, Peggy Champion, finished out the ribbon. And I'm going to tell you, Mark One, I watched that him from start to finish, and he just flat dab walked. Oh, yeah. And this was another good class right here. It was. It, that class was loaded. There was no good slouches class. No, uh-uh. But when you when you get that many good ones well, in a class, that's right. It's a matter of opinion. Yep. And I ain't knocking none of them because I I like the Alamo too. He's a yep. great horse. But you when you get them all in there together, you got to pick the one that you like the best. Oh yeah. In my case, I just really do like. Mark One. Mark One's a good horse, real good horse. Well, he's a bold. He, but know, I mean, look at yeah. him. He's bold and just the way he does is smooth. Yep. But now every one of these horses is, is capable of winning the celebration. Oh, yeah. You better believe it. It's going to depend on the judges on That's who, right. who's what. But they, a lot of people was behind her. Yeah. There it is, amateur 50 and over winner, reserve winner. Mark one and Molly Walters. Nice horse. Yes, real nice horse. Smooth as silk, buddy. All right. That was some good. That was some good classes over at Pulaski. Here's your open specialty. This was a great class. Yes. Honor and remember, and Dan Waddell took the blue for Kim Lewis. It's walk time with Link Webb was reserved for Lisa Baum, The Bachelor, Robbie Bradley for Jared Osborne. And he's ballistic, now, Ryan Blackburn for Dr. David up. Bullock. You know that Robbie Bradley puts a lot of nice horses in the Oh, he does. He puts some nice horses in the ring. And Dan, well, Dan's Dan. Yeah. He does a fantastic job. Robbie does a good time. Link Webb, I mean, World Grand Championship. Oh, yeah. He's done it all. And honored and remembered as yeah. a bad cat, buddy. Big, strong. All right, riders, call on your horses and show them to run them walk, let them all go. I still believe Kim will end up on him. Yeah. Something just tells me she will. Look at there. I'm just walking and shaking. Hey. If it ain't shaking, it ain't walking. walking he's, buddy, exactly right. he's, he's getting her done. He's doing it all right there. What more could you ask for? Remember. 
honored and remember and Dan Waddell, your open specialty winner for Kim Lewis. Nice horse. Hey. You look all day, you gonna be hard to find one. No, you won't. And, and we got a lot in this industry. We got a lot of real good horses, but this right here is definitely one of them up there in the top. Oh yeah. Let's put it like this, if you had a horse show with nothing but the best, he'd be there. He'd be, he'd be there. He'd be one of them. It'd be a bunch of them, because we like, got a lot of good we got, horses. We got a lot of good ones out there, real good horses out there. I want to remind everybody that Friday night, we have the Blue Ribbon Show in Federal, Tennessee. You can call Bart LaVorn, 615-478-2141. Showtime, 6 p.m. Jason Hughes is the judge. Jason's a good judge. Yeah, he is. He's a good guy. And then Saturday night, 118th War Trace Horse Show. Contact Beth Thomas, 931-580-6825. Or D. Cantrell, 706-366-1011. Start time, 6 p.m. Joe Fleming is the judge. And y'all can come and get Jerry to sign y'all or sign the picture because he was there at the first show they started at Woodruff. Yeah, that's right. I was there at the Hunters because we uh, we even had Woody Woodruff there, and uh, we we did a lot of stuff. Russ Thompson was there. We we did a lot of different. Maggie rode a side saddle in an 18th century outfit. Oh, okay. We we need to look that up and show it yeah. sometimes because it was good. Woody built shoes, all of that, and. I mean, Russ was there helping, but it was celebrate the 100th anniversary of that show. You know, a lot of people say the first celebration was actually at the War Trace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it moved up behind the, the high school, and then in 48, I believe it was, it went to the current yeah. grounds. But now War Trace is something that is just uh, a nice I mean, show. Well, it's the oldest. Yeah. It's the oldest show there is. They used to have it on Main Street right there where you got that little tower. Uh -huh. That's where they used to have the horse show when they first started having them, and they were coats. Yeah. It's just like first celebration, mainly coats. So it yep. just got a lot of history down there. Yep, it and, does. Uh, you go down there and go through the museum. Yep. That's the main thing. We will see everybody next week. You, yes. you, can, you can take us off there. Well, y'all be safe and good luck at the horse shows. That ain't bad. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse. I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.